Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. I know I'm a day behind, but in the spirit of the 4th of July, we're going to look at the big blue boy scout who fights for truth, justice, and the American way. This is the 2001 Silver Age Superman and Lois Lane box set from DC Direct. Starting off the packaging, and this box is gigantic. It really does feel like a vintage comic book cover. Right down to panels featuring the side stories and lots of extraneous text. The box also includes extensive bios, which we will not be reading, and a warning about how fragile the interchangeable hands are. On the side, we can see some of the other figures that were available. These are mostly two packs, although you could get Lobo as motorcycle and dog. And then on the bottom, you find even more instructions. It's a bit wordy, but there's a quaintness to it that I find really charming. For packaging, I'm giving this box set one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and Superman stands at six and a half inches, and Lois stands at five and three quarters. Released in 2001, this was the very first DC Direct Superman action figure. It's also the only all-plastic comic book style Lois Lane figure ever made that wasn't inspired by one of her super-powered appearances. In terms of style and engineering, they might look a bit outdated by today's standards, but they perfectly capture the Silver Age look and really feel like they stepped out of a comic book page. One thing I particularly appreciate is that Superman is smiling. I also love the sculpted on crest and the bright blue and red of the costume. The paint on the buckle's been worn off, unfortunately. I don't know if it's a factory error or the fact that I got it pre-owned, but stepping back and you hardly notice. Flipping them around, it is nice to see the yellow S-shield on the cape. It's also been sculpted in. Moving on down, we've got the signature Superman boots, and he does have a peg hole in one of his feet. Moving over to Lois, and I really like this earth tone color scheme to contrast with Superman. The brown and green and tan all go well together. Being a fashionable lady of the time, she has her pillbox hat, and there's a mischievousness to her features that really does feel like Lois. The hand that she's pre-packaged with has a pencil. Nice job on that, to be honest. And in her other hand, she's holding a steno pad. Hmm, I wonder what it says. Dum dum dum! <laughs> One interesting decision was to give Lois a cloth good skirt. Either way, she was never going to get a lot of range, but at least like this, she does get some. Just notice that they went in and painted the buttons on her blouse. Definitely a nice little touch they could have gotten away with not doing. Same with the blue highlights in her hair. Come to think of it, Superman has that as well. It's important to remember that this line predates Marvel Legends, DC Universe Classics, or any of the other standard bearers of the industry. In fact, I would go so far as to say that this was worlds beyond what most other toy companies were doing at the time. The one exception at the time was McFarlane Toys, and we all know how that turned out. Huge props to sculptor Tim Bruckner, who brought this artwork to life. For a presentation, I'm giving Superman and Lois one whole point. Moving on to posability, and there are a lot of differences between the two. Naturally, Superman gets a lion chair. From the top, and he has two different joints in his head. There's a hinge at the base of the skull, and a swivel at the base of the neck. This allows him to look up when he's flying. No down, though, but he can look side to side. Conversely, Lois has a swivel in the base of her skull. All she can do is look side to side. Superman has swivel hinge shoulders that raise up about 45 degrees. Lois has a swivel. Both of them, however, have bicep swivel. Lois's elbow is permanently frozen at a 90 degree angle, but Superman has a single jointed hinge. They also both have swivel wrists. Neither one of them has any kind of waist swivel, but both of them have T-style swivel hips. He can kick forward this far. Lois, unfortunately, doesn't get a lot of range because of her skirt. Both figures have single jointed knees, but Superman has ankle hinge. These are hardly the most poseable figures ever made, especially Lois. And yet, things like bicep swivel or a hinge neck were hardly an industry standard in 2001. Putting DC Direct's first standard Superman side by side with their last one, and it really makes me appreciate not just how far they came, but also just how strongly they started. For posability, I'm giving Superman and Lois one whole point. Moving on to playability and Superman and Lois come with a baggie of alternate parts. This includes alternate hands for Superman and Lois. Superman has a cradling Lois hand, and also a flying one. And Lois has a pair of woohoo hands. The set also comes with a couple of bolts to bounce off a of Superman. Take that, and that, 
Nah, I'm just kidding. They're actually for this display base. Two of the holes are for the pegs, but one of them is for something special. The American flag. You might think it's inaccurate because there's only 48 stars, but it's actually the flag that we flew in World War II, making it a great flag for this era of the Man of Steel. This set also comes with this fishing line and ring. That's for Superman's flying effect. You remove the cape, and underneath is this hook. Superman comes with an extra cape for flying, and you'll notice this tiny hole. You snake the peg through, hook it under the ring on Superman's back, plug in the cape, and Superman is flying. Like a pinata. If I might make a humble suggestion for a more practical way of doing this. A Christmas ornament display stand. You can usually find them in craft shops around the holidays or in thrift stores. This time we snake an extra long ornament hook through the hole. This way you can display Superman flying anywhere. And here he is with Lois. The set also comes with a hunk of deadly kryptonite which unfortunately mine is missing. But playability is more than just accessories and flying effects. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. For a quick rundown of the Superman figures that brought us here, here we have the Superpowers by Kenner. It's not the first Superman figure or even the first all plastic one, but for many of us it's still the gold standard. A few years later Toy Biz got the license and made this figure as part of their DC Comics superhero collection. For a lot of people it felt more like a cheap bootleg. Unfortunately we wouldn't get another comic book style Superman figure until 1995 with Kenner's Man of Steel series. Kenner tried again one year later with this figure. It was part of a series called Total Justice. By 1999, Kenner had been completely taken over by Hasbro, which released this figure as part of their DC Superhero series. A 6 inch scale Superman wouldn't appear again on toy store shelves until 2003. This figure was one half of a two pack in Mattel's Batman series. Mattel released this one a few years later as part of their DC Superhero series, and then this one as part of DC Universe Classics. While Mattel was making mass market figures, DC Direct continued to make collectibles for comic book stores. This Superman is part of the history of the DC Universe series. In 2012 was a major shakeup to the status quo, the new 52, redesigning Superman without his signature trunks. Of course, he was back in them soon enough, leading to this figure as part of DC Essentials. In 2020, McFarlane Toys took over the license, giving us this classic Superman based on Action Comics 1000. For a world's finest comparison, here they are with the Silver Age Batman by DC Direct, and here we have the Mattel version. For some other members of the Justice League, here we have the DC Inverse Classics Flash, here we have Aquaman, and my latest acquisitions, Green Lantern, and the Red Tornado. For a villain comparison, here we have Bizarro from the DC Comics Multiverse line by Mattel. And for some superhero girlfriend comparisons, here's Lois Lane with Mary Jane, and 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 Mary Jane, or Gwen Stacy. Come on Lois, get it together! For the Sentinel of Liberty from the House of Ideas, here's Superman with Captain America. For a relative scale comparison, here they are with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, Stealth Iron Man. Can you read my mind? Considering the DC Direct would eventually be known for a 7 inch scale, I was very surprised by how well this set worked with other lines. Not only that, but for 2001, features like alternate hands were kind of ahead of their time. And of course, this is a pretty cool feature too. For playability, I'm giving this box set one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. I won this set on eBay for $25, but it usually goes anywhere from $50 to $150. If you're patient, you should be able to find a price that's right for you. Even so, for price, I'm giving the Superman and Lois Lane box set half a point for a grand total of 4.5 out of 5. For more Superman, check out this video, or for another patriotic hero, check out this Captain America Versus. Thank you so much for watching, and happy 4th of July. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.